Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. I am flying solo today and I, I think you're going to love this information, whether you already have a lead magnet or not, there is going to be a lot of insight as to how to create a lead magnet, why you need a lead magnet, how to promote a lead magnet and so forth. So it's, I think it's going to be pretty, um, pretty powerful as I move through the content of today's show. So the title of the show is how to create a good lead magnet that generates high quality leads. Who doesn't need high quality leads? Let's face it. The landscape of growing a successful small business is very competitive, especially with the online space and the digital world that we're living in. So attracting quality leads and growing your email list is essential. It's absolutely essential for growth and for revenue generation, especially if it's going to be sustainable and your business is going to last longer than average businesses, which we know that, you know, in the first year of business, 50%, something like that of the businesses fail. So it's pretty significant. We have to be on top of our game and continuously grow our email list and strive to generate quality leads, not just leads coming in, because it doesn't matter if you have a large email list, if the people on the list aren't going to want to hire you eventually. So that's what we're diving into today. And I'm super excited to touch on this because I think there's just so much power in having a lead magnet for doing just that, creating high quality leads that can ultimately convert to paying clients. So let's dive into the first question. Why should you create a lead magnet? And I think it's important um, that we realize how essential it is for lead generation. If you want to grow your business, you have to be visible and you have to bring people into your community. You can pray all day, but if you're not doing tasks, taking steps, implementing strategies to bring people to you so that you can be seen as an expert and then warm them up to become paying clients, you're not going to grow. So this really is important. And we talk a lot about not growing your business on social media. Well, one of the key ways of being able to do that to avoid social media is your email list, your email marketing strategy. And in order to have an email list, you have to have to build it, right? Yes, some people will come to your site and they'll automatically join your newsletter. And when that happens, it's so awesome, but it doesn't happen frequent enough to build your list with that alone. So that's why having a lead magnet is so important. Email marketing is so important because you need to stay top of mind. In the show notes, I will link a couple of other episodes about email marketing so that you can learn how to create your nurture sequence. You can learn different strategies for email marketing, as well as learn why you need to grow your email list and some of those important factors for that, which we'll touch on a little bit today here as well. So it is crucial, as I mentioned, to consistently and constantly be building your email list, no matter the size of your list. Because let's face it, there's going to be natural attrition, right? Some people are going to drop off over time. Um, And anytime you have someone new, what you do is you increase your opportunity for referral sources and potential collaboration opportunities. And just really staying front of mind with those people that you're trying to nurture and warm up. And if you do it right with a lead magnet, you're bringing in quality leads. And these people are in a place where they trust you. And it's going to be a lot easier to warm them up because you know that they are going to fall into your soulmate client description. So some of the reasons to grow your email list is one, more high quality leads. As you intentionally grow the list, you know that these are, you're attracting people that you want to work with, that you're going to be, that you're going to feel fulfilled with when you're working with them and that, you know, you can get results for them. 
uh, you want to build trust with more people. And that's for probable, not only possible, but probable conversion to paying clients. You want to drive more traffic to your website and email marketing is great for that. You want to demonstrate your expertise in your niche and you want to do that to as many people as possible. So we want to grow that list so that we can continuously demonstrate what we know and provide value to indicate that we really are the expert, the go-to in our niche. You want to alleviate anxiety around having to be on social media all the time. So the more you grow your email list, the less likely you it is that you have to be on social media. Of course, you know, I don't believe you have to be on social media at all. I believe there are so many other marketing strategies that you can implement, but email marketing is going to be key to stay top of mind. And just to share information about yourself, about your business, what you do, provide value, to educate, inspire, entertain, all of those things that we need to do to grow our personal brand and our business. And you really do want to become memorable and recognizable as that expert. And that's another reason to grow your email list. So as I mentioned, we have other episodes about email marketing. I have linked re specifically related to this topic, episode 243 of the podcast, um, so that you can learn more about that. So how can you create a good lead magnet? First and foremost, you have to understand your soulmate client's pain points, their needs and their desires. Once you have identified what their needs, desires, pain points are, you can choose what do you want to address in your lead magnet? A good lead magnet can address multiple pain points, but the key is to keep the content in the lead magnet easy to consume. You want it to be simple. You don't want it to be overwhelming. If you overwhelm your community, they're less likely to convert. So keep it simple and concise so that they can recognize exactly how you can help them. Now, if you don't know your client's pain points, their top struggles and challenges, if you have a Facebook group, you have an opportunity to ask three questions before you allow people to join. One of those three questions should be, what are you struggling with? Or what is your biggest struggle? Or what is your biggest challenge? Whatever that, whatever your expertise is, that question should be related to the thing that you can help your person with, your soulmate person, your soulmate client. So, for me, I say business. What is the biggest challenge that you're facing in your growing your business? And then I get that information and I can use that as voice of customer. So as I'm writing content, I use that. So my lead magnets are going to address those questions that I hear people say, or those things, those items that I hear people say or read people say that are their biggest pain points or struggles. Now, as a side note, at least one of the other questions should be, what is your email address? And explain that you send emails to provide value, information on your expertise to help them. And then that way you can use that as a form of growing your email list as well, in addition to the lead magnet. And as we're talking about that, the Facebook group, you can share your lead magnet that you create in your Facebook group. Now, if you don't have a Facebook group, not to worry, because what you can do is send a survey out to the current people on your email list. So yes, you are just growing maybe, um, but it doesn't matter how many people you have on your list. You have people that are there because they want to be there. So send out a survey and ask them, what is their biggest struggle? What is their biggest challenge? and gather information from them that you can then use to create a lead magnet. And you can even say, hey, I'm going to create something helpful and so I wanna get some advice from you or some information from you, not advice, information from you related to your biggest struggles, challenges, pain points, um, needs and desires. So then you can use that information to decide what it is you're gonna focus on in that lead magnet. 
But the more specificity you have related to those pain points, needs, and desires, the more likely your lead magnet is going to convert. Meaning the more likely it is that people are going to give you their email address and download that lead magnet. So I've kind of hinted to this, but if you're creating an ebook or a lead magnet, whatever that form is going to be to get someone to give you their email address, it has to provide value. No, you don't want to give everything away so that they don't have to hire you or buy from you, but you do want to provide valuable information. You want to give them an immediate win. So decide on at least one major takeaway that a potential client can garner from that lead magnet and then implement either in their life or business and have or experience a positive result or transformation. So just as an example, my soulmate clients don't wanna be on social media to grow their business. Maybe they wanna go on periodically, maybe they wanna you know, connect with friends, family, loved ones, kids, whatever, their kids, but they don't wanna be there to grow their business. That's not where they wanna put their energy and their um, effort to grow their business. So my ebook is going to have different strategies as to how you can grow your business without being on social media. Now, of course, email marketing is going to be included in that lead magnet, which is funny because that's what we're talking about today. But that is what is going to be in my ebook. And I'm going to allude to that in all of the ebooks that I create related to growing a business. So that just gives you a little bit of insight. Now, because I also tend to work mostly with Christian entrepreneurs, I also have a different lead magnet that is just a list of scripture verses that people can reflect on and live by. I also have a video training for SEO and an intro to SEO for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Now, there are different formats, which we're going to get into in just a little bit, that you can use to deliver your lead magnet. And I'm just giving you that piece of information that I just shared so that you can kind of see how there's there's a variety, but you can incorporate your expertise in multiple different ways when you're talking about providing value and giving them an immediate opportunity to fulfill a need. So let's just summarize that as you go to create your e your ebook, your lead magnet, I should say. You want to think about providing a solution to a specific problem. Don't be too broad. Get specific and provide value and something that they can experience immediate transformation with. That immediate grat gratification is going to be key because people want results. And if you give them a result now, they're more likely to stick around because they understand the value that you provide. Demonstrate your expertise and credibility. And so through this, you can include social proof, testimonials sh that showcase your work and what people's experience working with you was. And indicate the benefit of your lead magnet and why they need it. You have to be clear on that. And that's going to involve, you know, a, a, a title, um, a hook to, to let them know, like, this is it. And this is why you need it. Let them know the benefit that they're going to get from it. All right. So I hinted to the types of lead magnets. So you, and you guys, I want to encourage you to go over to the show notes because on the blog, I've mapped this out in great detail. You could even print this off as a guide. It is, there's so much detail in the show notes. So because of the sake of time, I don't want to, to have every detail here. I don't want to just read it to you verbatim, but you can go to the show notes and get all of this information. So 
let's start with eBooks. I've mentioned those a few times. So those are basically a comprehensive resource that will provide information on a specific topic and have actionable, actionable advice that the reader can go and implement and see a result, a transformation. Checklists and templates. These are great because you can give someone specific actions that they can follow or use in their day-to-day -day operations or activities. Webinars and online courses, you can create those and give those away for free. You can use case studies or success stories and include those. People are very curious as to what it's like to work with you. So you can use a case study outlining something that you have done where you have given someone transformation when you've worked with them and you can include that. You can use quizzes and assessments. I can tell you, I used to have one for personal branding and I took it down. Um, it, it was great for a while and it did bring in a lot of leads, but then I took it down uh, and I may introduce it and just revise it a little bit, but quizzes are really fun. They're, they were really, really popular a couple of years ago. I, I guess they still are. I'm not seeing as many of them, but they're, they're pretty fun because you can get a lot of information from people when they fill out those quizzes or assessments. So they do help. They provide knowledge to your reader, but they also give you insight as to what people are thinking that are out there that are potential clients. And then toolkits and resource libraries. Again, this is similar to like a list um, but or a checklist, but it's like a toolkit or a resource library where it's a collection of valuable resources that you have learned or attained over the years. And now you're sharing it with someone, which is really great because if you think about your soulmate client, they're probably a few steps behind you, maybe three months, maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe a couple of years, but you've already attained these resources. So now you can share them and save them time and energy and money trying to get the same resources. So that's why um, toolkits and resource libraries are so handy and they do convert pretty well as also. All right, so let's talk about designing your lead magnet because no matter what the content is inside, it has to look good and be appealing if people are gonna actually download it. Canva is an exceptional tool for creating attractive lead magnets. There are templates there already, so it's pretty easy to use. You can just change your brand colors and your fonts and the imagery so that it's aligned with your brand which you want to use high quality images and you want to use colors and fonts that are aligned with your brand identity. Make sure that your entire ebook is aligned with your brand identity because that helps you be recognizable and memorable. Keep it simple and concise. If you have complex concepts, simplify them. Make the content easy to read and digest. Do not overcomplicate it. If you do, you will lose interest and the opportunity to convert high quality leads. If you want, you can keep it interactive, just like with a quiz. Sometimes that does help gain um, traction or increase interest. Videos are also engaging, but keeping the audience engaged is really beneficial in order to convert. And last but not least, when you're designing your lead magnet, optimize it for use for a mobile device. We know that so many people are accessing our content on a mobile device. So if you do have a video or an ebook or a list, make sure that it's gonna transfer over to a mobile application as well as on a computer. All right, so now the fun part, right? You've created it, it looks fabulous, it's appealing. You're ready to put it out into the world. How are you going to promote this? Once you know that you've created an irresistible lead magnet, it's time to generate those leads. 
So first and foremost, you're going to promote that lead magnet on your website. Have a button to download that ebook right at the top of your homepage. You can also include that on all other pages of your website as well. Most people have the subscribe to email list or newsletter on their website. So you can have that. But like I said before, having something more specific than just a general newsletter does attract more leads. So that is an option. You can also use pop-ups. Personally, I don't like pop-ups. They annoy me. I always click through them. However, they do work. So if you want to do a pop-up, just make sure that that pop-up is um, activated properly, installed properly, so that it doesn't slow down your site and there aren't any complications with it. And include that call to action to download in all of your blog posts. So what I do is have the call to action to download more information, more resources, or a specific lead magnet at the end of my blog post so that it's always there. Now, when we talk about Pinterest marketing, this is really key because we're driving traffic to the blogs. So then that call to action to download that ebook is there. You can also actually do that with the ebook through Pinterest as well. When you do YouTube, videos. You can include the link to your lead magnet in your description of your YouTube video, and you can have that as a call to action in the actual video. You can collaborate with other influencers to promote their lead magnet, to promote your lead magnet, and you kind of collaborate and share both valuable information from each of you. Being part of summits, this can be your call to action when you present in a summit to download this free lead magnet that you have to offer. You can also use paid ads. Of course, I like to do as much as I possibly can organically without paying for ads, but you can get a lot of email addresses. You can grow your list and get high quality leads if you have very specified ads for your lead magnet. But you want to make sure that the demographics are set up appropriately so you are attracting your ideal, your soulmate clients and quality leads versus just any old lead. Because having just any old lead is not going to help you in the long run. So if you aren't using social media to grow your business, that's okay. But what I would encourage you to do is still have the link in the bio to your lead magnet because if people land on your on your profile, at least they can still access that and that you can still get a quality lead from that platform. So I have my eBooks on a pin, so like, or a post, I should say. So when you're in Instagram, those top three posts that your grid has, they can be pinned posts. So you can pin specifically what you want to always be present in those top three posts. So you can include your lead magnet there. You can also put a link to it in your cover photo on Facebook, whether it's your personal or your business page or a group. So you have a lot of opportunities, even if you're not using social media to promote your business or market your business or grow your business, you can still have that lead magnet presented there as an option for people to download it, which is better anyway, because once they're on their email list, they get to know you more than probably what they're going to do on social media anyway, because only 7.6% of the people that follow you on social media are going to see your post. Whereas with email, you're probably going to get at least a 30% open rate, which is a much higher rate of people seeing your content than what's going to happen on social media. All right, so where are you gonna house this lead magnet? How are you going to deliver it? What, what is it gonna look like in terms of the whole process? Well, first and foremost, I'm gonna encourage you to automate because you don't need a distraction of having to constantly give someone this because the leads are gonna come in quickly and quite often um, multiple a day. So you don't have time to enter these, e these email addresses manually. So let's create a landing page. This can be just a very simple page on your website that has a hook. It's on brand and it tells what this lead magnet is about, the benefits they're going to get, social proof, the, the key components 
of a sales page, which is basically a landing page, um, can be found. I'll link this in the show notes as well. In another episode that I did, um, oh, it's been a while now, but it all still um, is applicable as far as creating a page that's going to convert. So just a simple page. It doesn't have to have a ton of information, but you do want to make sure that there's a hook, that there's a button there that they can go download it. You want to provide the benefits, maybe indicate at first what like that you understand their pain points and that this is a solution to those pain points or struggles or challenges, and then have the button there to download. Now from there, it needs to be automated. And to do that, you can do multiple things, but this is where a CRM or an email um, management program comes into play. You can do this for free in MailChimp. You could use ConvertKit, Constant Contacts. You could I use Click Automations, and I love Click Automations because it has everything I need in the CRM. That's where I do everything. Email marketing. If we were to do social post, we can schedule our social posts there, our contracts, our invoices, our onboarding process, everything is in one system, which is so amazing. Even our academy is run out of click automation. So you can do memberships there, communities. It's just an incredible resource. And I will put a link in the show notes to that. But the reason I am telling you this is because automation is key. So you want a system where you can have that the form where they enter their email address and the information you're collecting to download that ebook. Then you want to automate the delivery of the ebook. You can send an email out with the link to the ebook, wherever you're housing that ebook. So you can house that, that lead magnet in Google drive. And so that, that link to access it in the email that goes out is going to be the link to wherever you're housing that information. You don't give editor access, you just give view only access. So it's safe, nobody can alter it. um, And you still house it under your business, but they can then access it. Um, Then you can start your email nurture sequence from there. And I'm gonna link in the show notes an episode that I did um, a while ago, but I'll link that in the show notes as well. So you can discover what goes into that email nurture sequence, what goes into each email in that sequence. I recommend like five to seven emails after people have downloaded your lead magnet. It just gives them more insight into who you are, what you do, how you can help them, but explains to them, you know, that you understand what they're experiencing, what their pain points are, and then also gives them an opportunity to see social proof, testimonials, and things like that within that nurture sequence as well. Now, one thing I didn't mention back to the landing page, make sure it's SEO optimized so that people can find it on Google, even if you're not running ads or using social media to drive traffic there. Make sure that it's optimized so that people can find it based on the keywords, key phrases of the solution you're providing within that lead magnet. Super, super key. All right, so now we have learned why we need a lead magnet, why it's important to grow our email list. We talked about designing the lead magnet, what goes into the lead magnet and how to deliver it. So now let's talk about measuring it. Is it effective? And I should say cost effective because It's going to take time to implement this. Time equals money. So there is cost associated with it. Plus you have your CRM that you may be paying for. So you have to factor in that cost and any other costs that there may be to to create this lead magnet and then to house it and to deliver it and so on and so forth. So we want to know if this is working or is it not working? So first and foremost, measure the conversion rate. Look at the percentage of visitors to that page where you're housing the lead magnet, your landing page, your sales page. Look at how many visitors and look at how many of those visitors followed the call to action to download the lead magnet. The higher conversion rate, the more effective you can consider the lead magnet to be. Now, evaluate the bounce rate as well. The bounce rate is people come to the site and just click away versus actually following the CTA or staying on your site, consuming the whole page, or maybe even going into a different page of the website. But 
look at how many people visit versus how many people drop off. The bounce rate is high. The lead magnet is not resonating with your soulmate audience or the people that are coming to your site. So there's something either missing with your messaging that you're bringing the wrong people into your site or the lead magnet isn't what the people need. So you have to consider both of those things. Um, Evaluate your engagement. Like are people clicking through to other pages? Are they simply coming to this site, downloading this ebook and then going off? And then last but certainly not least, especially if you're running paid ads, you need to know the return on investment from the ads. So evaluate that cost effectiveness by what you're paying for the ad and how many people are coming in and downloading the ebook and then calculate that long term cost efficacy by how many people actually convert to paying clients from coming in as a high quality lead. So I encourage you to regularly evaluate that and analyze it because even if it works for a year, it may drop off and then it's time to create a new lead magnet. You don't want to stay stagnant, right? So if it's not converting after a time, then, and maybe it converted really high when you did ads and then it dropped off, um, you could reinstitute ads or you could create something new and start over. I currently don't have ads running for any of my lead magnets. I did a year or so ago. Um, They did work well, but it is very expensive to do ads. So I say really evaluate what you find most beneficial and determine how much you want to invest in this because you can do it for very little cost if you don't run ads. So I say start doing it and promoting it yourself and have an optimized page on the website and guide it, guide people to it that way. But other than that, I would see if that's effective first before I invest in ads. And you know, I forgot to mention before too, another way that you can promote it is if you're a guest on a podcast, always send people to download your free free lead magnet. Um, that has been a big bonus for me as well. It kind of ranks right up there with like doing a summit or a speaking engagement because you can easily promote it that way. And that is the call to action that you give at the end of those talks or podcast guest opportunities. And of course, if you have a podcast, it's a no brainer, do an ad to your lead magnet because that's also a great way to get more email addresses and grow your community. And I like to think of your email list as your community because you are now, you bring them in because, and they wanted to come in or they wouldn't have given you their email address. So then as you communicate with them and provide value for them every single week, then they see you as someone they want to spend time with and they become excited to see your emails pop into their inbox. So it's your opportunity to continue to grow that community and nurture them and build a relationship with them. That emotional connection that is so important for people ultimately deciding to buy from you or share you and refer you. Okay, so I'm going to share with you the resource page on my website where you can go and see the plethora of lead magnets that I have to give you a little bit of information or insight as to things that you could create. Each one of mine is very unique and different, but you can get an idea um, of how I created mine and just the different formats that are available to you. And that address for the website is therobingrahams.com forward slash resources. And of course, I will have that link in the show notes as well. And for those of you who might be interested, I will have my affiliate link for Click Automations in the show notes as well. If you want to go check that out, it is a go high level program and Tamara has white gloved it. I mean, or white labeled it and provides white glove service. I cannot rave about it enough. I absolutely love the platform and I love the service I get from the owner, Tamara and her team. So if you are interested in an all-inclusive one-stop shopping type CRM, I will put that link in the show notes for you to click through to as well. All right, friends, that's a wrap for today. I would love to hear from you 
to know if you found this information helpful. Of course, you can leave a rating and review that always warms my heart. And I am so, so grateful. I'm going to start a new um, program per se, where we're going to pull names out of a hat. <laughs> and once a month, we'll pull uh, people's names out of a hat who have left a rating and review and they will have an opportunity for a free strategy call. So um, if you're interested in that, be sure and leave a rating and review and then send it to us, tag us on social media or send me an email with a picture of the review. I'd love to see it and know that it's you. Leave your name so that we can call you out on the show as well. You know, when you do iTunes reviews, you can't always see the name. So make sure that we see that see your name and um, can can get a hold of you so that you'll know if you won the bonus opportunity. All right, friends, that's a wrap for today. I'm so grateful you were here with me and I will see you all next time. <laughs>